That's the man who, along with Michael Jackson, is the biggest selling black artist of all time, filmed live there in the 70s. Now, James Brown has been in prison for the last two years. He was arrested and convicted of assaulting his neighbour and resisting arrest in a car chase with the local police. Well, despite pleading not guilty, James Brown was then sentenced to six years' imprisonment. In Aitkin, South Carolina, we were able to get an exclusive interview with James Brown on one of the rare occasions he was granted a weekend pass. So good! So good! I got you! How you feel? People over in England now think that. They think that James Brown is actually free. No, I, I'm not free. Uh, the only thing free in, is me in my spirit. But my body's not free. I'm incarcerated. Yeah, but I hope to be out. Whenever, you know, uh, as long as I don't lose my integrity and my dignity to get up. I uh, had a chance. I could have been free from the very, very beginning if I had uh, pleaded guilty, a guilty plea for something that uh, I'm not guilty of. So I just took time instead. What was it like for you in prison? Well, it's uh, quite a lesson that you don't really want to learn. It's, it's a very great awareness. And it also puts together a lot of things that you've probably been thinking of all along. Things that you were somewhat in the dark about and they kind of come to light a little bit, you know. I mean, what was the hardest part of it, though, for you? The hardest part was being locked away, period. That was the hardest part. But I still got the faith. I still got my dignity. I still got my integrity. I'm not going to blow that and still got my soul. <laughs> What are your actual proudest musical achievements? Well, uh, individually, my proudest musical achievement was, was when I cut the first record, because that meant that I would no longer live and get in the ghetto. I'd get a chance to do better things in life. My next proudest thing was when I cut Say It Loud and Black and I'm Proud. There were people in this country that were ashamed of their color, ashamed of their integrity, and ashamed of their background, shame of their own being. Unfortunately, we deal with a lot of things that I don't like to be a part of. I wish there was no prejudice in the world. I wish there was no racism in the world, but I can't stop that. Well, where did that funky thing come from, though, isn't it? I'm not going to tell you that. Einstein didn't tell you where his thing came from. I'm not going to tell you where mine got from. You have to live in it. Did, were people really shocked when you first played like that? Oh, they said it was incorrect. Oh, a lot of my musicians told me, say, you, you're not playing right. This is wrong. When I made Try Me uh, in 1959, they thought, he's crazy, you know, the way I made Try Me, the way I was going to the different changes in it, because that hadn't been done. And when I made Please, Please, Please in 56, they say, I can't believe it. He's saying, please, please, 20, uh, 30 some times. Uh, how is they going to make a hit with that? Please. That was totally different from please, please. So that's one of the things that kept me around. God always gave me an insight to do something totally different from my last thing. And he said, that's not James Brown. By the time the song gets over, I got a hit. This is a man, man, man world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman on the day. How do you feel about all these hip-hop guys who seem to sample all your music? Well, uh, copying is the greatest form of flattery, and that's respect, and that's love. They could have thought of a, a lot of other entertainers to copy, and they instead copy James Brown and uh, even the rap. 95% of the rap songs are James Brown. And I, I respect that, I love that, I appreciate that. Because let's face it, it means a day that over half of your music throughout the world, whether it's gospel, uh, pop, rock, rhythm, blues, rap, hip hop, little country, you know, some classicals, it adapted itself to the James Brown theory. That's very, very important, you know. And I, I thank God for that, because then I don't have to worry about Mozart, Sheba, Beethoven, Bach, and 
Oh, those people <laughs> just work back brown. <laughs> Now, you've actually been working uh, in the community, haven't you? What kind of work have you been doing? Well, I've been working with young people, uh, getting kids together from here. I've been talking to kids about staying in school. I've been talking to kids about uh, human behavior, uh, alcohol and drugs. I've been helping the homeless grandmothers. And I think I, I love it very much. And helping the needy, those are the things that, that, I, that I like doing, you know. <laughs> Come back. Where will it be? Well, when I when I just returned to the stage, because I didn't I don't have to come back. I didn't go no place. But when I return to the stage, it'll be to be one of four places: Moscow, Paris, London, or Madrid, or maybe all four. Do you have a message for your fans in England? My message to my fans there in Britain is love. E one another. Believe in yourself, and somebody else will believe in you. Trust in God. Give yourself a chance to be what God intended for you to be. Oh, and say, God bless you. Save the fish and chips. After the fish and chips, coming after the break, we've got the Pixies, Janet Jackson with Amanda, and first though, see if you can suss this one out. Which one of these celebrities is the odd one out? Find out after the break. <laughs> 